Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Alex Juarez, AARP's Arizona's Communications Director. Welcome to today's show on Back to Basics, Tips for Balance and Stability with Coach Sherry Ann. Sherry Ann, how are you today? How was your weekend? I'm great, thank you. I had an amazing weekend. I got out to the wilderness and and got in touch with uh, the quietness of it because it was in New Mexico. And I will tell you right now, the there's no bugs. It was I was so surprised. Oh, nice. And it was the quietest forest I've ever been in. So it was it was quite spectacular. That is wonderful. I think we we all need that. We need to the, be able to exercise, but also need the peacefulness. So that that's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, the Glad quietness to, to reset and just get in touch with nature. And I saw three bighorn sheep, which were- Did you really? To see up close. Wow. They are massive animals, but I was prepared to duck it between rocks if they decided to charge. But they yeah. were just pretty docile, hanging out, and I was just enjoying them in their in their environment. Well, that's wonderful. Glad uh, glad you uh, came back safely. No falls, none of that, right? No, but I challenged myself. <laughs> I challenge okay. myself in the process, though. That's wonderful. Well, today we are missing a great person here on our show. Dana is not able to make the show today, so I'm a big shoes to fill in for Dana, but hopefully I can do so and you know, maybe half fill those shoes. But anyhow, uh, today's show is really important because um, uh, for many old, older adults, an, an unexpected fall can result in a serious and costly injury. injury. Um, I, I did not know this, but one in three older adults fall every year. That is a huge number, I think. So something that we need to be more aware of. And in today's show, we are going to be talking about uh, some of the common risk factors, maybe some evidence-based facts. So Coach Sherry Ann will give us some tips on stability and balance. So with that, let me turn it over to Coach Sherry Ann. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I was shocked at that one in three. And so I actually went and did some digging and got it from three different sources. And the CDC has come out with that, so it's it's pretty um, pretty apparent that it's a concern for a lot of people. So one in three, you know, over the age of 65 are having a serious fall. That and 20 to 30 percent of those falls result in fractures, hip fractures, rib fractures, sometimes head injuries, and sometimes these injuries are life altering. So it's a big deal to pay very close attention to the things that you can do to prevent falling. Um, because you know nobody wants to fall and have their life totally altered, but um, but some of the things that happens is when we hit 30, believe it or not, we have what is called sarcopenia, and you start to lose muscle mass. You know we lose bone density, and we also lose muscle mass, and it happens at to everybody. But the more active you are, the more you slow that, and so it's just very important that people start to become very acutely aware of that in their thirties. So they don't get to be 60 and be like, Oh my gosh, what happened? Um, so doing constant activities and challenging your body. And most people think that it's just core, like they need to keep their core strong for balance. And yeah, it is your core, but it's also just your whole body. So, cause what's happening is your brain is sending a signal to a muscle to respond and you have these nerve cells. And if you're not challenging those nerve cells to receive that, to receive that message from the brain, they just kind of go to sleep. And so you're not only losing muscle mass, but you're using the ability for your brain to communicate with your muscles appropriately. And so it's always important to just continue to challenge that. I mean, I'm sure that you've noticed like, um, most people kind of just chalk it up to like, oh, I just was a little stumbly. But like you can, if you watch yourself like slowly over time, like you'll notice like little things here and there that just catch you off guard. And it's like, oh, wait a minute, like I'm a little dizzier or if you're not challenging yourself. So it's important that we start at an early age to just constantly be staying active and challenging the brain to send that appropriate message to the muscles to do stuff. And it's it can just it slips so easily and so fast. So, I mean, have you had a situation where you've like just been all of a sudden you notice like, wow, I'm, I was normally sure footed doing that. And now right. I'm not sure footed. Yeah, absolutely. I'm 57. And I have noticed that I've lost some of my coordination, some of the flexibility. Um, I feel I don't feel as limber as I used to be. And um, I catch myself some just like losing my balance, you know, so I, I've got to start working on something on that. So what tips can you give us on that? 
Well, so along those lines, that's also one of the contributing factors to people falling is they start to notice it, then they right. don't do anything about it. And then they're more fearful and they're more timid. So then they stay away from activities that will actually help them. Mm -hmm. So when you start to notice it, don't shy away from it. That's a common mistake that most people make is they don't want to do it. They don't want to put themselves at risk. They don't want to put themselves in a situation where they could fall. But you have to train yourself to not allow yourself to let that happen because it can just happen so fast. Because what happens as we age, not only are you losing that muscle mass, but our hormones change. Like, so when you're young, you have this human growth hormone that's making everything grow super fast. Your muscles grow, your bones, everything grow. And as yeah. you age, that hormone kind of goes away as well as testosterone and insulin. And all of those help our muscles contractility. And so we, that, that's something that we can't combat unless we're taking, you know, a hormone replacement, like unless you're taking HGH or unless you're taking testosterone, those, those just go. Um, right. But testosterone is usually a supply and demand. So if you're not demanding it by using your muscles, because women have testosterone too, it's not just a male mm -hmm. hormone. So if you're, it's a supply and demand. So if you're not demanding it, your supply is going to go down. So the whole yeah. use it or lose it is so, so yeah. very, very true. It really uh, applies here. Yeah. It totally does. So you've got to be using it on a regular basis so that you yeah. don't lose it to maintain balance. Um, but, you know, maintain your balance is not just to prevent falls. Like it's for your overall health. Like everything you do is, so it's part of everything. It's not just part of, you know, trying to avoid falling. Right. Um, one of the other things that people don't do is as they age, they tend to eat less because, because they're not as active, their body's not requiring as much. And most people just stay away from protein you know, as they age and you need that in order for your muscles to continue to grow. So right. that's the other contributing factor to falling and having injuries is your muscle mass de being depleted because you're not, you're not nurturing it. You're not feeding it. And so right. eating is a huge, huge um, part of it. And so being able to have your body change that protein into energy. Right. So it's, it's the whole use it or lose it. So if you're not, making your body do it, it's just not going to do it. And so, gotta do it. yep, you've got to, got to do it. Got to stay active. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> what about, what about medications? I mean, many people past 50 start taking medications. Can medific, uh, can medications be affecting our balance and our stability as well? Absolutely. And that's one thing that you have to be, just be aware of your body, but also mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to have those conversations with your doctor. Like if you're taking a new medication and you notice that you're dizzy, like talk to your doctor about alternative medicines that maybe you can do because, and then sometimes it's unavoidable. So you have to mm -hmm. be conscious about keeping it there. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Unfortunately, there are quite a few medications out there that can impact your balance. And what that ends up happening is because, so our balance is all based on the sensory input from our eyes. Because have you ever tried to stand on one foot with your eyes closed? Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I can stand on one foot easy with my eyes open. I close my eyes and I can start to feel what they call your proprioceptors. Right. These small little muscles in my lower leg and my ankle start to fire to like, because I have nothing to keep me on balance with my eyes closed. Right. So when you close your eyes, it forces you to rely on other sensory, your feel, your, you know, how your, your inner ear is, everything that's firing extra. And so, yeah, so balance is based on the sensory input from our eyes. Right. Then we have our inner ear part of it. And then the sense of position, being able to see things like in the, where, how you are in time and space. Mm -hmm. And so it's, so when you take away the visual aspect of it, because if you look at blind people, like they have balance, right. they just had to learn how to have all of their other sensories kind of play a role in, in helping them have balance. So you can do it. Like, and I challenge people, like if you're doing an exercise at home and you're in a safe place where you're not going to fall and get hurt, or you can put your hand on something to stabilize you, close your eyes. You know, and I, there was, I had my mom do exercises, you know, where she would just stand there on one leg and then have her fingers just touch something just to give her a sense of time and space, sure. but go ahead and close her eyes. Cause the fingers touching something aren't necessarily going to hold her up, but it gives her time and space you know, so that she can focus on that balance. Cause so, but the inner ear part of it, and we kind of touched on this very briefly at the end of the last show with Dana, cause she had mentioned um, earbuds. 
Yeah. So I'm not a big fan of earbuds. I'm not a big fan of things that go in your ears because you have all these tiny little hairs in your ear that actually play a massive role in how our ears help us with balance and not only here. So I prefer over the ear, like full on headset. Like the ones I have on. <laughs> yes. There you go. Like the whole AirPod thing, cordless, you know, yeah. and things that go in your ears, it actually, it can damage the little hairs in your ear, which are very important. Um, it impacts your ears natural way of cleaning itself. Cause that's why we have earwax. Right. And so, cause you can impact the earwax and keep it in the ear. And so when anything gets in and impacts your inner ear, your balance is off. And sometimes you don't even know it's happened. And I think that's kind of what Dana was talking about in the sense of like, she was running with air with headphones and over the course of time, like she was realizing that her balance wasn't as good when she had like ear pods in. Right. And so be very aware of when you're putting stuff in your ears, like in headphones, because also not only that, because like the sound can actually damage the hairs and damage yeah. your ears as well. And that impacts your balance. And exactly. we lose things as we get older. It's just part of aging. I cite one of them. Like yeah. that's why when people get older and they make jokes about, oh, I need my readers. You know, <laughs> but it's that's just part of life. That's part of aging. So not only do our eyes do that, but our ears do that too. So if we're not helping ourselves by shoving stuff in our ears, sure. like try not to do that. Like if you really want to listen to music, like try to put or anything, a podcast, a book, try to have it on the outside of your ears. Um, and doing like a full on headset rather than putting stuff in your ears. And uh, it's just one of those things that most people just don't think about until you after. don't think about it. Absolutely. Until it's too late. Right. So it's, it sounds, I mean, we've talked about several conditions or things that can be affecting our balance in here. I've heard um, uh, vision, for example, is one, you know, as we age. Another one can be the flexibility or muscle loss. Um, so the coordination that, we, that, that our muscles and our bones and our joints are doing. Uh, the other one is medications. Um, the environment of the places where we walk, et cetera, can also cause the, those falls. So, and before we go on in this one, just let me remind the audience that uh, they can ask questions and uh, they can go on the, um, the message board there and type in the questions for Coach Sherry Ann. Uh, make sure that you type it in and she'd be happy to answer these. And remember, we're talking about the uh, stability, so tips on stability and balance in here. So talking about that then, uh, Coach Sherry Ann, what tips do you have for us? I mean, what, what exercises can we do to help our balance? Yes. Well, so most of the time when a fall happens, it's usually in a transition period where mm -hmm. someone's either getting up from a chair, going to sit down in a chair, getting out of a car, um, transitioning from a lower curb to a, a higher curb. Like things, mm -hmm. So any kind of a transition where the brain doesn't register and then all of a sudden you're not responding. Mm -hmm. And so before I get into exercises, I do want to say that you it's not only muscle mass that you're losing, but you're also losing muscle force. And the difference in that is muscle mass, your, mus your muscular nature is what creates the movement. But the force is how quickly you can move. So when you're doing some of these exercises, you want to really think about the force also sometimes because usually when you're falling, you have to react quickly to catch yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, right. if you're struggling, you got to be able to get that foot out in front of you quickly. That requires force. That's not muscular mass. That's not, you know, so that's being able to move quickly. And so when you're doing some exercises, you also need to be thinking about doing it, you know, very quickly. And some of the activities that you can do before I get into exercises are, you know, go do yoga. You know, yoga okay. will mm -hmm. very good bodily awareness mm -hmm. and core strength. So yoga and Pilates those two exercises are really, really wonderful for bodily awareness, breathing, just being really in tune with your body. Yeah. Um, another very popular is Tai Chi. Like if you notice in a lot of right. home or elderly communities, they'll uh -huh. offer Tai Chi. And that's not a cliche thing. It's not like, oh, when you're older, let's do Tai Chi. Like you could start Tai Chi in your 20s. Like it's a wonderful exercise and it kind of falls in the same category to, with, for me as yoga and Pilates of just bodily mm -hmm. awareness fluid movement, understanding how to move and how to protect yourself. So Tai Chi is a great exercise. Um, 
go to an aerobics class. Or even if you don't want to go to an aerobics class, then go to water aerobics. Some people yeah. are thinking water aerobics, is that really a tough, but it is because water is so dense. It's yeah. denser than air. So it's harder to move through water than it is on land. And then you don't have the jarring of your joints or anything like that. So but water aerobics, great bodily awareness, great strength building, um, good core and just awareness. So water aerobics, another one that is tennis, like tennis gives you a lot of lateral movement, which people mm -hmm. tend to not use as they get older. They don't right. do a lot of side to side movement. Everything is very linear, very forward, mm -hmm. rarely backwards, but tennis creates lateral movements forward and backwards. And it also is one of those where I was talking about force because when you're playing tennis, sometimes you have to move quickly for that ball. And right. so tennis is a great activity to do. And if you're, if you're like, I can't play tennis, because that's how I was when I kind of picked it up a little bit. I was like, oh, we'll see how this works. <laughs> but it's a really fun activity and just go do it. It is great. I see many older adults playing pickleball now. Yes. Very similar. You know, not as much movement, but you've got to do your side to side movements back and forth, et cetera. And the agility and the uh, probably reflex has got to be good too. It really helps with your reflexes. And the wonderful thing about pickleball is it is a smaller court. Yeah. So you're not having to like r run as far. <laughs> so exactly. Exactly. pickleball is a great one. Um, and bowling people like bowling doesn't create a lot of force, but bowling makes you, you're on one leg at one point, you know, when you're releasing coordination. And so it's coordination, but it's strength. So bowling is a great one to have some bodily awareness because you're right. kind of in a different position. It's not a normal position when you're bowling. Um, mm -hmm. And then biking. Biking is one that people are really fearful of because if they fall, like that could be a significant fall. So that's yeah. one that I would wait until you feel comfortable within your balance. Um, but beach cruisers are so easy to ride, so easy to balance because the wheelbase is so long. Pretty thick so, and long, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you're yeah. new to biking and you want to pick it up and you live here in Arizona and you're close to the canal or places yeah. where you can ride, getting a beach cruiser and cruising around on a beach cruiser is great because it's you really – it's be really hard to fall off of a beach cruiser because you yeah. can easily put your feet down with your bottom still on the saddle. And so, Absolutely. but when you're pedaling, it does, you do have to work on your balance and your eye coordination. So that one is a great one to do. Um, exactly. Let me ask you a quick question. In the gym, I see the, uh, it, it's a balance ball, like a half kind of shaped ball where people well, stand in. Sorry. I have uh -huh. one. You uh -huh. have one. Okay. <laughs> Let's chat about that one because I, I find it pretty interesting. But you know, for a person that doesn't have much balance, is it dangerous? Yeah, that's it. Exactly. Yeah, so these are called a BOSU ball. So it's flat on one side. What is it called again? A BOSU, B-O-S-U. Okay. BOSU ball. Um, All right. Here in my kitchen, because this is predominantly where my youngest does his schoolwork. Uh -huh. And it gives him the ability to stand on it and and burn some energy. <laughs> Because <laughs> he'll bounce That's on what it. We did. <laughs> um, but, uh, but is it good for older adults to do that one? Oh yeah. So if and there, I mean, I think they're a great tool to have because you can use right. it for a lot of different things. If you don't want to invest in something like that, because they're a little pricier, you can easily go get. And I had this right here. This is called a stability disc. Yeah. So it's knobby on one side and smooth on the other, and you can pick these mm -hmm. up at Target, Walmart, anywhere. And you just inflate it to your your desired inflation with just a bicycle pump. Like, I mean, the needle. I'm sorry, not a bicycle, like a ball pump because it just has a little hole. So the benefit to this is if you don't want it to be super wobbly, have it kind of deflated to where it's not super intense. And then you can just stand on it on one foot. And it really um, forces your all your ancillary muscles in your ankle to uh -huh. really fire so, and those are, you know, we talked about proprioceptors earlier. And what that is, is your nerve cells sending a signal to your brain to like say, hey, this is unstable. Like we need other muscles to fire to help keep us safe. And I really, so the reason we had this though was um, for him to sit on. Because if you sit on it, 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 it'll constantly move if you'd like for it to. Um, right. Anything if you're standing on it. And so these are great. So these are called stability discs. These will, this is um, a great, cheap, easy tool to have in your house to help with stability. Because that's the thing is you want the brain to recognize unstable situations so that it can react. 
And so creating right. it with something like this, because if you're out walking on a trail or uneven ground and you, your footing gets off, that's usually when people, like I was saying, transition with the ground transitions, mm -hmm. they're not able to catch themselves. So if you can create synthetically that situation at home with a tool, uh -huh. then it helps you when you're out and about. And so I do love the stability disc. I think they're like $15 at the store. Um, and they're great to have. And plus, I like the knobby side because it massages the bottom of my foot. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. But, so let me briefly, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change my camera angle here a little bit and okay. step back. All right. So I have a chair here. And the reason I wanna do this is because I wanna show you like a couple of things you can do. First, I'm gonna do a sitting exercise and I'm gonna angle it like this. So if you're gonna do a sitting to a standing, what I want you to do is try to not rock your body to stand up. I want you just to be sitting here and then really think about your hamstrings, your, every, your whole lower body and just stand up. Don't rock into it to get yourself up. Like really work on those lower legs and then to create the whole force that I was talking about earlier, pick your legs up, put them down quickly and stand up quickly. And that way you can create some force and it's gonna make you move a little bit faster. So that's one thing that I would like for you to work on is just stand up quickly. And if you wanna work on your lower legs, doing a squat and having the safety of the chair behind you in case you decide to fall over backwards or give up, like you just go down and touch and then stand back up. And this is just a basic squat just to help build those lower legs. So the other one when you're doing that is using the chair. You're just gonna do a hamstring curl. And that's all you need mm -hmm. to do is bring that leg up. And if you want, if you have ankle weights, go ahead and use an ankle weight and just do a hamstring curl. The other one I like that I would have people do is do toe raises. So up on your toes, stand there for as long as you can. And if you can, take your hands off the chair. If you need to keep your hands on the chair, you can. But lower and then come back up. And then if you can do it one-legged, just do it one-legged. Okay. Once again, uh -huh. take your hands off. You can do it without hands. You need to put your finger on, put your finger on. But the idea is to get to where you can do it with no hands. I mean, that would be right. the ideal situation. Um, the, doing these exercises are so easy and so great. And I can put, create a list of them and put them in the, uh, in the Facebook group. But when you're sitting here, also, if you have ankle weights, if you don't, it's totally fine. But you can do a leg extension, just putting your leg straight out in front of you, holding it there, contracting your, all the muscles in your leg, and then bringing it back down. Extending it out, bringing it back down. These are really super basic exercises. Another one I want to say about the chair, because I don't think you'll be able to see me, but you can hold the chair and just do lateral make moves, because like I said earlier, most people don't do any lateral moves. They just are yeah. so forward and backwards. So raising it out to the side. And if you're comfortable, you can just go out to the side, squat down, come back up, bring it in. So that you're okay. doing some lateral moves. And then upper body, you can get, if you don't have weights, a lot of people don't have weights, but if you can go get one or two pound dumbbell weights, those would be great. And you can just sit in the chair and do curls because you don't want to totally ignore your upper body. But just doing curls, like bending over and doing rows, like most people forget, like when they go to pick up a bag of groceries and they're unstable and they go to pick it up, that's kind of what happens is they just aren't totally prepared for natural body movements. So when you're exercising, just think of basic body movements that you'd normally be doing out and about. Like if you're a grandparent and you're picking up your grandchild, I mean, that's a big deal. Like get stable, you know, pick your grandchild up, because if yeah. you're picking them up when you're off center, that's usually when you can kind of stumble and, and get hurt. And, and what's what's a good way to pick up something that's a little bit heavier for us older adults? I mean, do we keep our back straight? Do we how, how do we bend over to pick something heavy? So, uh, is, so what I would recommend is making sure that you are keeping your back straight. So right. what I tell people is when you're going to bend over to pick something up here, I'll tilt this back down just so I can show you that. So if you're going to go down and pick something up, like I'll just use this Bosu ball actually. So mm -hmm. if I need to bend down to pick that up, I'm definitely going to think about keeping my belly button back to my spine to keep my hips neutral. Because what ends up happening is people's hips are, they get weak and mm -hmm. they get out of alignment. And that's how then you overcompensate and you arch your back. And that's how people end up hurting your back. 
So you're going to squat down, keeping your belly button to your spine. And you're going to be using your legs and your upper body at the same time, and then you just stand back up together. Like keeping so you're, your you're squatting down kind of with back. your back straight. Because okay. if you bend right. over to pick something up, mm -hmm. most people aren't sucking in their belly, like keeping their, right. keeping their hips neutral. Usually when people bend over, they have a tendency to arch their back. So when they come up, their back is in an arched position, and that's how they end up pulling their back. So, so you're using more of a back muscle than rather than your core in the front to help you pick up. Definitely, but you try to use your legs as much as possible. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. So Stronger strong. muscles. Right. Exactly. If you have to use your back. Just make sure that you're bracing, you know, your whole core, you know, and your right. hips and everything, so that you are picking it up appropriately. And okay. the thing too is like reaching up ahead. Like when people have to reach up, they lose balance too. So when you're doing any kind of activity, like if you reach up, you're you're not in balance and alignment sometimes. So just be acutely aware of, you know, keeping your belly button to your spine, keeping right. your core tight, and and just engaging the whole body and not let it just be a limb that's doing the work, like one exactly. limb. Let me ask you a quick question. How about shoes? How important are shoes that give you support? That is a really great question. So. <laughs> and the reason I'm chuckling is because the whole history of shoes, like I could go into this for a while just because my mm -hmm. background is running. So a lot of the shoes that we have on the market today have what right. they call, it's a drop. So the heel is higher than the toe. Okay. And so I'm a big proponent of having a zero to three millimeter drop shoe to where your heel isn't super elevated because we weren't designed to walk with our heels up and our toes down. It shortens our Achilles, and that's why we have Achilles issues, calf issues. So try to have a flat shoe as possible. Um, that is the best way to go about it. And if you're going walking, if you're on trails, make sure that you have a good tread because yeah. you want to set yourself up for success. You know, don't go walk on a trail in a pair of Vans. You know, it's pretty much a slick sole because it's not going to grab the, the dirt and the rocks and, and keep you safe. So it depends on what you're doing. But yeah, shoes are a big deal. Like, and some people just don't give it enough credit. But having yeah. the proper shoes will help you tremendously. Tremendously. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, Wonderful. Another thing that people can do is, because um, I make jokes about it, but the sobriety walk, you know, when you have to walk <laughs> heel yeah, toe. One step toe. The other. But right. do it and then do it backwards. Like, so challenge yourself, go forwards and then go backwards. And, and see how your brain registers walking backwards. And if you use, need to use like a walking stick or something, or do it along yeah. something so that you can just have your hand or something, but challenge yourself. You know, and each time you're doing any kind of activity to promote stability and you have it down packed, then add a little element to make it a little more challenging. Because if you're not, if you're not using it, you're gonna lose it. Yeah. So constantly challenge yourself so that you can continue to grow as far as you know, your awareness because you want it until so you're not here anymore because it's important yeah. absolutely absolutely we have a comment from sandy at uh, it would be great to have uh, to get these uh, exercises together as a reference or do them together as a reference or maybe one class we can just dedicate it to doing exercises and have everybody follow us you know as we're doing sure. it. So that's wonderful yeah and i know we're almost at the end of the show we only have uh, less than a minute and a half but what do we have um, to look forward in our next uh, next session well that's a great I was going to go one direction until you just said what you just said. So, I mean, in two weeks um, on the 22nd, we are actually going to have it a little later in the day. We're having it at noon. No, um, right. at 10, mm -hmm. And we can go through a whole myriad of exercises um, and be able to service your community with a whole going through everything a little, you know, a little bit deeper in depth. Um, so I'm happy uh, to do that. Otherwise I was going to talk about how to boost your immunity as we're kind of waltzing into the flu season. Um, yeah. Well, you know what? This is all, uh, all this month is uh, uh, pre fall prevention. And I know the week of 21st, 22nd, somewhere around there's also consider that week fall prevention. So it'd be great, a wonderful topic if you can show us more and actually do the exercises with you. Yeah. We can follow you. So that would be tremendous. That would be yeah. really good. So come prepared to move your body. <laughs> I'll have to start exercising now. <laughs> no, it's nothing intense. No, no. no. <laughs> That's wonderful. Some awareness in our bodies and 
awakening those proprioceptors and, and making sure yeah. that we're doing everything that we can to set ourselves up for success. That's wonderful. Coach Sherry Ann, thank you so much again for your wonderful tips. We're really excited and I'm looking forward to the next uh, session and we'll do some exercises with you. Hopefully you guys all join us next time. Remember it's on the 22nd, 12 o'clock this time. We have a teletown hall uh, that morning. So um, that's uh, it's gonna be on voter voting, the importance of voting elections 2020. So hopefully you can join us at 12 o'clock and do some exercises with Coach Sherry Ann. Again, thank you, Sherry Ann, and have a wonderful week. Thanks, Alex, you as well. Take care.